Hey guys, this is Bruce, and in the last video, we were talking about Stig Viewer, and we talked about where to download Stig Viewer, how to set it up, kind of an uh, overview of what the boxes mean, how to link, link some of those findings directly to Risk Management Framework NIST 853 controls. Now we're going to get a little bit deeper into this. So I want to show you how to um, grab more Stig Stigs and put them in here, operating systems, how you can add those in here. Let's let's do that. So let me show you, first of all, where we download those from. I'm on uh, public.cyber.mil forward slash Stigs. You just go to Google and then type in Stigs, D-O-D, and you'll find this site, this site and it's just cyber.mil. All right, so here we are. Um, where we, we download the Stigs from... See if I can find it. Um, from the tools, SRG tools is where you find this stig. And I'm not showing my screen. Hold on, let me show my screen. Um, let me show that. Give me a second here. Bear with me. All right. So this is where you would download that, and this is public.cyber.mil for slash stigs and i got it from this right here this uh tools viewing tools right here is where you actually get the stigs and these update from time to time so you got to go back here and, and get the most updated one they do change these on a regular basis so there's how you you find that now how do you get the actual download the actual stig information the content you go to document library right here document library and this site may have changed by the time you see this this might all be different i mean this changes from time like completely changed the whole website is what they'll do and they have to because there's so much more tools and stuff coming out that they have to keep up with the time so and now we're, we're going to get some operating systems we'll get a couple of operating systems so now we're just sorting that list because it's a huge list with hundreds and hundreds of different applications and stuff that there you go right there we just sorted by operating system let's say we wanted linux systems so we would just you know click linux systems and we would download one of those linux systems that appear i just i think i accidentally hit cloud let's go back go back there we go. Operating system is what we wanted. And then we we wanted Linux, Unix and Linux. There's 12 of those. So it'll sort by just those systems. And we're going to get Red Hat Linux 8. And it's going to download it as a zip. And that's what that's exactly what we want. So now we've got that zip. So that's good. And you know what? I'm going to also get a... I want to get something else here. I want to get a application. We unclick all of this so it'll bring everything back up. Unsort. Okay, application. There's 135 applications at the time of this recording, so it's quite a few. Um, let's just get a. I'm just gonna get a random. Let's get Google Search Appliance or something. Get that, and we'll just. I don't even know if this one will work. We'll, we'll just try it anyway. Oh, it's just a memorandum. Okay. We want the actual stig is what we want. We want the zip stig. So that won't work. Let's go to the next one here. It takes a while. I think it's reaching into a publicly available database. So it's just why it takes a while for it to upload information. There we go. Let's get kind of trying to get something a little bit robust like something that you would normally use like office automation or what can we get that's a good one that everybody uses I'm looking for like a word like office 2000 or something like that um application server no uh desktop let's get something from the desktop All right, these will do. One of the let's get this uh, Adobe Acrobat Professional. Let's get that one. 
So it should download a zip. Okay, there, that, that's what we want. All right, so now we've got everything. I got everything I need. Um, and now we're gonna go back to go back to the stick viewer. Let me switch my screen here. There's a stick viewer. Okay, there we go. There's a stick viewer. Now what you're going to do, and I can't, I apologize in advance, I can't actually make this larger, but what I'll do is I'll go to file and you go to import. And then here's all my files right here that I've been downloading. Let's start off with, let me see if I can find the Adobe one. If it downloaded, let me see, should be here. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. So we're going to upload that one as a zip. And you can see they're all of the vulnerability IDs. Now let's get Linux. I want Linux 8. Um, let me see. Linux 8. We'll get that one in there. And let me see if I have Windows. I don't know if I have Windows, but let's see. This is important for if you have an environment that has all of these different um, applications and operating systems you would want to you'd have to at some point pull these all down to go through each one of them and I might not have windows um, it usually comes with it but maybe not let's see if that one will work I don't think so yeah I didn't I didn't download that one so it's all right we'll just keep going with what we have here well and you could like look at this you can search both of them and it'll have all so what the the great thing about this is that you can actually pull down all the files that you need. Like if you had a Windows system and that Windows system had Office and it had all the browsers, it had Chrome browser, it had the full, a full build, right? You can have a whole baseline, put them all in here and then look at everything at once. And then you can sort by just Cat 1s. Let's say you guys wanted to just fix Cat 1s because those are the most important. You would just... Uh, sort, add this to the filter, and then those are all the cat ones for both Red Hat and Adobe, you know, and all of the baseline stuff you have. So that's actually really cool. Um, I want to take this a step further and, and show that you got some more actionable stuff where you can you can use the um, you can manually update this and use it as a file that you can you can use as an artifact as you clean up your system. Now, to do that, we, we're going to go to, let me see if I remember how to do this. You're going to go to checklist, and you're going to go to create a checklist marked stig. I think this is it, current filter results. Oh, okay, you can go by currently filtered results. We just want everything check marked by stigs. This, this br brought in everything in our baseline. All the, I believe it brought in both the Linux stuff and the and the Adobe stuff, right? So you can literally have a whole baseline of stuff. Build a system with Windows, with Office, with Chrome, with all of the different stigs, and and then bring all this into a, a checklist that you can create and then manually update it. Now, one thing to note is as you fix this, it's important that this thing doesn't automatically save. Like we're kind of getting spoiled in that. You get onto a cloud-based system or something and just automatically save in the background. You don't have to worry about it. That's not this system. You got to save this. And, and trust me when I tell you, you do not want to get 90% done with this thing. And then your computer shuts down or crashes and then you lost all your data. and You got to manually do all this again. So save often is what I'm trying to say. So right now we're just going to go ahead and save it somewhere. Um, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to save it. Um save it here and we'll just call it um stig test or something i don't know just any random name will do because we just want to save it all right so now check this out it'll sort automatically by these tabs here by all the stig ones the twos and the threes and then as you update this this pie chart will change and it allows you to export with a CSV. Really cool stuff. 
Um, so let's let's keep going here. And this part right here has a computing and a non-computing environment. So computing environment would be like the system that the systems that you're you're working on. Let's say it's a uh, the system is a it's a server that you guys are going to image, and you're going to use that image to do the same thing across all the 25 other systems you have or something. So the name of the system is um, Golden One or whatever, and then the IP, and then the uh, MAC address, and all the other information that you want to put in there. And or you can just get the host information off the system you're on. You just click this. If if the Stig, the best way to do this is have the Stig on the system, on the baseline system that you're trying to do pull all the stigs in and then just get host information. And then that way you can kind of check it as you're going. Like you can be on that system, on that server, on that workstation, whatever, and then check the files and see what's going on on that system. And there's a feature on top of this that allows you to automatically fix some of the this stuff. But that's we're not talking about that on this particular uh, video. We're just going to talk about how you can manually do this checklist. All right. So here we are. Um, you're going to identify it as a workstation, um, a domain controller, or you can even do a web uh, a web system or a database stick. So it's none of those. So let's uncheck that. Um, let's see. You can actually uncheck. Like, let's say you wanted to not do Adobe. You could just leave that off if you wanted to. So that just filters that down. That's really cool for your baseline. And... Uh, Area uh, select technology areas, different technologies that you could put on here. Security uh, base boundary security, um, DNS, Exchange Server, whatever type of technology that we're covering that you you could put in there. For now, let's just leave this blank. It's not important for for now. Uh, I just wanted to show you this. So let's go to this first item here. This first item is going to break down all the details to the context of the system. It's a Linux 8, it's um, we're on vulnerability uh, 230221, and this is dealing with that uh, uh, Rail 8 must be on a supported release. So um, it's an it's an out of date system it has to be reported uh, supported. Um, so that's that's what we're dealing with. Um, so here here we are. It's having it's giving us all the details of how we can update this to the, the most current version and what we need to do. To, to do that, and it's linking it down here in the references to the actual applicable NIST 800 control, which is all very helpful for GRC people. And you could actually add comments in here and details of the finding. Like if it's something we can't fix or we, we've already fixed it with this other way, you could put comments and finding details in there. That's really cool. So let's say that we actually fixed this one on the Windows, on the Linux system. We could say that it was either open, which, which marks it as red, we could put it as a not a finding, meaning it's already fixed somewhere else, or not applicable. We it just we don't even have that on the system for whatever reason. It's not applicable. Now check this out. If we go now, this is a lot of work. Like to go through each one of these manually, it's it is a lot of work. Um, so we're gonna just go through and do a few of these. Let's say that one was closed. Let's say this one was not a finding. This one was not applicable. We'll say that this one was not applicable as well. And then what we could do is let's let's say that um, a bunch of these were were done. Let's say that you could select. What I'm doing is hitting. Sh I can hit Shift. Wait, let me see. Shift, hold down Shift, and then select multiple at once. And then we'll say all of these are not a finding for whatever reason. See how it's marking the pie chart? And let's do. Let's go like this. Let's go. All of these are not applicable. And let's say, um, let's say some of these are actually open, and I'm going to shift and then select a bunch of these, and say um, that these are open, and then we're going to say um, that the remainder of these are, let's say that they are not a finding. So there you go. There's our final report. And see how it says how many are open, how many are not a finding. It's kind of doing a running checklist of everything. And then you probably have details of your organization and what, what's going on with each one of these. And then this is kind of cool. You can like look at these by cat ones, cat twos, cat threes. And you can see we have 
quite a few cat ones in there. Well, this one that we have to go fix because that that's that's a huge detail, de, uh, huge issue right there because it's a cat one. Now, let's say we want to export this. Let's export this to a CSV. And um, it takes me to this file right here. You can't see it on my screen for some reason, uh, but it's a box that pops up. Let me see if I can. Let me see if. Let me see if I can fix this real quick. They changed the feature on this uh, this software that I use, and it's kind of annoying, actually. It's a little bit annoying. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Entire screen. That. And that. Okay, let's see if, if it'll allow me to show it on the screen again. Export data, and it still puts it over here. Wow. And then it won't show. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is, when I hit export, this is what it looks like. And um, we want to, let's see, what do we, we want this, we want, what do we want on here? We want this, this, uh, we don't really have a Mac ID, we just had the name, we, ha we want the vulnerability ID, we want the vulnerability ID, I'm selecting these by ch clicking on control, and then just selecting each one. We want the stig ID, we want the rule, we want this, we want the severity, we want the, let's say, rule title, we want the, um, the discussion, we want the IA control, we want the checklist, we want, okay, we don't want false positive, what else do we want? Stig, CCID with text. Okay, um, I think that's good enough for now, just to kind of give a demonstration. All right, so now it's going to ask me, okay, here we go. We're gonna call this STIG, STIG test results. Now keep in mind, this is, this is a lot of work. Like if you had to manually go through each one of these items, I mean, Imagine how much work that's going to be to go through each one of those on a baseline system. It's a, it's quite a bit of work. I've done this myself a few times. And um, yeah, it's 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 quite a bit of work. And I can't remember where we, where we recorded this. Let me see. I want to say it was in the. I think it was in the downloads. Let me see. Let's see, where did I try to save this before? D drive stick viewer, okay. D drive stick viewer. All right, here it is. Here are the results right here. Let's see what these look like. And there you go. There's our results right there. This is really cool because this can be used if you are an assessor and you wanted to run, take their baseline system and run the STIGs or, or look at their results of their STIG. Um, this is a great way uh, for you to have a report, put it a part of your report, or if you are doing an internal audit of your system. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and untext wrap this so you can kind of get a bird's eye view this is everything right here um this is this is great so this is this is not bad at all and that's how you run a report that's that's how you use the stick viewer and um that's it for this one and i'll try to do another one to give you guys more context and how all this stuff works it's 
It's actually a really cool thing. I've seen it used outside of the military quite a few times because it's just a really, really effective tool to use. And there's another one called SCC, which maybe I'll, I'll try to use that one and give you guys a demonstration of that one as well. But there it is right there. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one.